to call the meeting of the Frontier Regional School Committee to order at 701. And we're going to shift things around just a little bit, but first, um, as I mentioned on the last meeting, we're going to start each meeting with just a review of our operational goals. It's a good way to just kind of center everybody for the conversations that lay ahead every meeting. The school committee's primary responsibility is to establish those purposes, programs, and procedures that will best produce the educational achievement needed by our students. The committee's charged with accomplishing this while also being responsible for wise management of resources available to the school district. The committee must fulfill these responsibilities by functioning primarily as a legislative body to formulate and adopt policy by selecting an executive officer to implement policy and by evaluating the results. It must carry out its functions openly while seeking the comments of the public, student, and staff in the decision-making processes. The first order of business tonight is to review and approve minutes from September 17th. So I'll just need a motion. So moved. Thanks. Are you ready to vote? Yeah. <laughs> You're like, already, I approve. <laughs> um, I don't think we have anybody remotely and I see did he hop on no no all in favor motion passes we're going to move up the student council report and Anna I think is in person here with us yeah excellent thanks welcome I'm Anna, I'm the student council representative, and I'm going to start by sharing a piece uh, written by Frontier students, and it's a land acknowledgement as we approach Indigenous Peoples Weekend. Um, here it is. Frontier Regional School resides in the valley of Quinetico, the southern portion of what is now known as the Connecticut River. This land once belonged to the Wabanaki, or the people of First Light, as well as the Pakumtuk and Nipmuc tribes who have a rich history having lived here for millennia. This land was not ceded through colonialization, attempted genocide, and the spread of disease. These peoples were displaced and removed from the rightful land. Today, some indigenous peoples still lead and teach here. We're grateful for this land. It's a place where we speak out, build community, show pride, work, learn, educate, play, and continue to grow. We share this as a first step to bring awareness about land, solidifying our commitment to positive action in the community. In turn, we strive to learn more about these indigenous peoples and the land on which this institution now resides. So some current events in Frontier Regional is Spirit Week. And yesterday was Pajama Day. Today is Adam Sandler Day. Um, <laughs> tomorrow is uh, Rhyme Without Reason. Wednesdays, or Thursday is Color Day. And Friday is Anything But a Backpack Day. There's lots of home games this week. Uh, currently going on is boys soccer um, senior night. Uh, tomorrow is girls varsity volleyball at 6 p.m. Friday is varsity football at 7, alongside JV girls soccer at 4. And this Thursday at Frontier, we'll have the pep rally, which will end with some lip syncing from teachers. Um, <laughs> also this month is the high school homecoming dance, City of Stars is the theme, which is on the 19th. And the Fall Coffee House is October 24th from 6 to 8 p.m. It's open to everyone, I suggest you go. Um, the Fall Concert is October 29th from 6 to 8 p.m., also open to everyone. And lastly, November 5th from 6 to 9 p.m., the presidential election live stream will be held here in the LMC for everyone to watch. And this is hosted by students in FCAP. Thank you. Great stuff. Appreciate it. All right. <coughs> we have. Oh, Bill. Do not have Shelly tonight, and. 
since the last meeting, we've processed 18 warrants, totaling $1,632,786.40. Shelly sent out the expense reports earlier this week. There's nothing new to bring to your attention. Any overages were the same that were brought up last month. If there are any questions, I'm happy to take those. Thank you. It's shorter than Shelly's. Don't tell her. I know, yeah, don't tell her. Don't tell her. No, we appreciate your long version. And your short versions, they all have their place. Um, I passed out uh, a sign up sheet for folks who expressed an interest in speaking at public comment. I think there's a couple people who walked in since the meeting was started. And if you want to, if you are here and have an interest in speaking, we'll go ahead and have you sign. We see we do from the sound so we can share this. And just to give everybody a little bit of framework for um, public comment, um, some pieces that I think are important. One is that we try to limit public comment to 15 minutes. We'll try to limit this space to 15 minutes. We do have an option to extend it if uh, it seems appropriate to allow the conversation to continue. Although that being said, it's not truly a conversation between the school committee and the public in this space. It's a chance for us to hear input from the public. So I think that one piece that can be uncomfortable in that setting is that the intent is not for us to have a dialogue back and forth, but for your comments to guide our conversation. So I just want that to be to be clear as we head up to this, it can be an uncomfortable space to say things and not hear things back. Um, we'll try to have the speakers limited to three minutes and to please make sure that we keep this space a respectful space. We do have the right to cut off com conversation if things are um, becoming more threatening or vulgar scenes, things like that. But we do try to have some decorum around the conversations that we have and the things that we hear, if, and, and that is kind of an open invitation for the rest of the school committee that if there's something that rises to a concerning level for you and you'd like to call uh, for some concern about that, just please raise your voice. All right, one away. Give one other. <laughs> so I'll keep, I'll keep a running time and just let folks know when 15 minutes is up. If people are running up against three minutes, I'll also kind of you give you a warning in that space. That would be fantastic. Do, Can you do one, yeah. that would be fantastic. How about I give, I'll give, a, I'll give a one minute when, when, when you have one minute left. Thank you. As soon as that sign up sheet comes back, We'll kind of start from the top. And just as long as we're here and have a little bit of space, we did update some things on the website that have a little bit of outdated information from COVID with like a request to make public comment ahead of time. And so you can, you can just for the general public come to a meeting and if, we don't always have a sign-up sheet, but if there looks to be a large amount of public, we will try to keep things in an orderly space with the sign-up sheet. So the first person on this list, it looks like, is David. If you want to um, stand up and say your name and your town, and then you can go ahead and speak. Uh, my name is David. Uh, I'm with Conway, and uh, I'm here for the new policy change for homeschoolers and uh, sports. My name is David, and uh, I am currently participating in extracurriculars at Frontier High School. This new policy will change. This new policy change will affect me personally. 
I am a dedicated student and consider myself quite disciplined. I like to wake up early because I find that I am more productive during those hours, which helps me get a head start on my responsibilities for the day. Primarily schoolwork and football. I hold myself to a high standard, especially when it comes to my academics. Whenever I receive a less than perfect grade, I see it as an opportunity to, to improve and work hard to correct it. I love trying new things, and this year I tried baseball and football for the first time and quickly fell in love with both. I truly enjoy being able to socialize with my friends at Frontier High. For me, playing sports is the highlight of my day, and spending time with my friends makes it e even better. As an extrovert, I thrive, I thrive on making new friends and spending time with them. The extracurricular activities are my primary way to socialize. I would like to thank my friends from football for being for supporting me. If this policy change is implemented, I will no longer be able to participate in football or hockey coming up. And I do not want to lose the opportunity to be a part of my team with my a part of my team with my friends. Uh, this change would also affect my little sister Ruthie, who wants to in the upcoming years participate in Frontier extra curriculars. Thank you for this time and I hope and I sincerely hope you will take my situation into consideration when making your decision. activities. 
Rarely are child's entire class loses PE and other special time because several children are chronically disrupted. Those students participate in extracurriculars. Can you speak up just a little bit? I'm so yes. sorry. Thank you. We have even thought that homeschooling our child might be more productive and provide her with a safer social experience. I don't know how I can justify for a child that he can't participate because he's because he's now because he's homeschooled even though he once could. My child will be affected by this policy change, but the school did not alert me, follow me, or give me the opportunity to ask questions or to have a discussion. We homeschool lawfully. We receive permission and authorization from the superintendent. We meaningfully educate our child. My child is a well-behaved and academically achieving homeschool child. What part of our scenario warrants excluding? When weighing this policy out, it appears that it will hurt more children than we have benefited. I urge you to consider this and oppose the policy change. Thank you. Ashley? My name is Ashley. I'm a mother. Um, I'm also a nurse in the community. Um, I want to share my informed reasons why I oppose this policy change. I have reviewed the very limited information that has been provided to us. I reviewed the handbook and policies of the district. First, the change negatively impacts a group of community children, yet the district did not invite community discussion. Second, the current policy provides inclusive access, successfully occurring for years. The district did not provide an objective reason for changing a policy that inherently enhances the community, development, and social emotional wellness for children. The district's current curriculum is based heavily on inclusion, yet the policy change does not model inclusion for the rest of our children. I would remind us that the Department of Education does not promote the exclusion of homeschoolers from extracurricular activities. The district adheres to policies of the Massachusetts, Massachusetts Interscholastic Athletic Association, which does not promote exclusion of homeschooler children either within sports. While the district suggests that homeschoolers may not be held to the same standards as enrolled students, I point out that the district holds the legal obligation per the Department of Education to verify that the standards are being met and has established its own district application process specifically for verification. It is authored by our superintendent and states, the home education proposal will be equal to the education provided for the students attending Frontier Regional Union 38 schools in thoroughness and efficacy following the guidelines of the Massachusetts curriculum framework. In considering the speculation of unmet behavioral standards, our handbook outlines the tiered disciplinary response, which the district makes case by case, excluding a whole group of children who are in good standing and who have been vetted by the district, goes drastically outside of the district's behavioral and disciplinary policies. I gently remind this community that we are recovering and struggling to move forward after district educated children were unable to meet the behavioral expectations of our school. Changing policy from a moral high ground without community conversation is unacceptable. Going on, the district did not inform CPAC, the required advisory council legally tasked to participate in the development and evaluation of district initiatives affecting special education children, including those who are homeschooled, of which I have one. I'd like to point out that the district did not consider less extremes or offer any proactive options that would better ensure the speculated standards and meet inclusion. The policy change does not align with the district's recent commitment to equity, which includes, we believe in the importance of having accessibility on every level and in every location to all students in our community for equity and inclusivity. It does not align with the mission statement the community interaction agreement, the district social justice commitment, and the commitment to responsive in education. Um, 
I would also like to, I would like to end and say that our policy on non-discrimination includes that nobody is to be subjected to differential treatment because of a legally protected characteristic. I would like everybody to know that this is a legally afforded right that is not always an easy decision for families. In ending, I'd like you to know that there are children in the community, in the high school community, more than one who participate in extracurricular activities and who were already told they could not participate, of which three times told them they could not participate. Thank you for your time. Thank you. I'm Jen. Um, my name is, thank you for all being here. My name is Jen Sell. I live in Conway. I have two daughters who have graduated from Frontier and have worked, and I have worked in a school system in Western Mass for the last 30 years. I have expanded my career outside the classroom and, and have had the privilege of working <clears throat> as a provider for special needs children, one of whom received special needs services through this district, but is educated at home. This has worked for him well. Today, I want to express my concern regarding the proposal policy changes, <coughs> which will exclude homeschooling students' access to extracurricular activities. As someone who works with children within the school system and outside of the school, I feel there is a critical need for inclusivity and support <coughs> for all children. Our district signed the anti-racism and equity commitment. The proposed policy changes do not align with the community of equity. Restricting access to extracurricular for homeschoolers, in my view, is discrimination. My question is, is there any data to support that this isn't working? And um, has the data been brought to the community? I feel that we need to approach policy change with transparency and inclusivity. As a community member, parent, and educator, I urge you to oppose this policy change regardless of the child's educational setting. Thank you. Please correct me if this is not how this name is pronounced. Erlinda? Yes. Yes? Yes. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Uh, my name is Erlinda Tuesca and I am the mother of David and Ruth. And, um, and I wanna thank the football team and for the parents, for the friends who are here. And we have some friends online as well. And we have a group support, a big group support. And I'm just grateful for all of you. So my children, our children are very dedicated students. My son, David, is a dedicated football player. And being part of a team with his friend is crucial for his social development and his overall well-being. David wakes up every morning at 6 a.m., sometimes even at 5.30, and he's just up and ready to go. To ensure that he has enough time to complete his academic work and dedicate time to his physical training, he balances his studies with homework sections at the UMass library. Sometimes he goes to GCC library and as well as at home. In addition to his academics, he makes time to go to the gym, he attends football practices, games, and he has demonstrated his dedication to both his dedication and his passion for football. Participating in a sport has taught him many lessons in discipline teamwork, and time management, skills that are essential for success in life. David understands and respects the rules that are set by the schools and is fully committed to follow them. If he doesn't meet the requirements, he knows that he should not participate in the practice and he should not participate in the games. And we make that clear at home. His friends played a very important role in his life. They encourage him and they provide support. They share both victories and challenges. And 
Yeah. For every game. So the social aspect of being part of a team, helping grow, building connections, and lead to lifelong friendships. A sport a very important component, component of a well-rounded education. And they offer an opportunity for homeschool students like David to connect with their peers and develop a strong relationship. I ask the committee to reconsider any proposed changes to policies that may limit access to extracurricular activities for homeschool children. It is essential to recognize the importance of inclusivity for all students, regardless of their educational background. Davis' dedication, Davis dedication to both his education and his football team is a testimony to the positive impact that participating in extracurricular activities can have on a student's life. I know I speak not just for David, but for many families who share their passions and their commitments for the children's dreams. I know my 10 years old, Ruthie, she also has dreams and she also has passions. And I just hope they are not taken away <coughs> and that she will have the same opportunity as David. Thank you for your attention to this matter. I really hope you will reconsider this policy and allow homeschool students to participate in sports and extracurricular activities, improving their educational experience and fostering a sense of, com of community. I want to finish with one thing. When I received an email from our superintendent, I really appreciate what is in the bottom of his email and it has been on my head and I think about this over and over. Building dynamic learning communities, one student, one learner, one family at a time. Please consider mine and do not change this policy. That's 15 minutes. I'll extend public comment another 10 minutes and we'll see how we can get through this. I would ask in the interest of trying to make sure everybody has an opportunity to get what they have to say. And if someone has already made a point that you would like to bring up, if you could try to keep that as concise as possible to new points, that would help to expedite everybody having a chance to have their um, their say in this. So you can reinforce other points, but if you can try to be as concise as you can, we'll try to get as many people in and I'll reassess after 10 minutes. Uh, yes? Can we ask about still sending other emails that we received because we don't necessarily need to hear the emails read because right. we've all read them already. I've read all of them. Particularly the long emails we don't necessarily need to read. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Bring that up. Are you ready with? Oh, okay. Um, Holly. Hi, I'm Holly Johnson. I live in Wheatley, um, and I'm here uh, to represent the CPAC, the District Special Education Parent Advisory Council. And I was one of the ones who sent an email, and so I'm not going to read the whole thing. We did have. Um, signatures added to it since we sent it, so I can resend it with the community signatures. Um, I do want to add, in addition to the email that you already read, um, that no, I know other people have said it, that no information went out to any of the families, and not just the homeschool family, but anyone in the district who might be considering homeschooling or um, considering applying for a frontier diploma, which I understand is also part of the change we're talking about, um, and you can't know who those families are, and really, it should have been give, us giving this chance for the discussion. If it had gone out, we might have more people here for the discussion. Um, and CPAC wasn't asked to weigh in. As is our, that's what we're there for. That's in the law for your FIs. Um, and I want to speak a little bit about students with disabilities. There are many reasons a family decides to have school good for faithful children. It can be hard to get our children the resources and individual learning they need public school. Disabled children are also more likely to be bullied, and we know that is a big reason why students leave the school. Homeschool families are still part of the district. The state requires that they submit education plans and progress reports to the school. When a disabled student is homeschooled, the state still requires 
the district to provide evaluations and IEP services, and the schools receive funding for those students. IEP students come to the school for services, including socialization. Whether they are enrolled in the school or not, they are still part of the community. Thank you. This, um, this letter did, did get emailed to school committee members, and I'm going to read it really fast. And the reason I feel it's important to read it is because it's coming from, it's signed by a group of, of over 20 people, and I just think I want to represent their voices as well. Um, so my name is Suzanne Ryan. I'm a member of the Deerfield Inclusion Group, and we're a growing group of families, educators, and community members who seek to promote education, awareness, and support around issues of equity and social justice. Um, many of you know that I was a preschool teacher at Deerfield for 18 years before I retired, and now I'm teaching at Waitley. So here's the letter. We, the undersigned members of the Deerfield Inclusion Group, wish to, wish to express our concern regarding the proposed policy change, which would exclude homeschool students in our communities from participating in extracurricular activities. This sudden change without supporting data or rationale is troubling and raises many questions. As a community, we have reason to take pride in Union 38's inclusive values and policies. Ensuring that all children and families in our district know they are welcomed and supported is something that makes our district special. Though we know that the Mass Department of Education allows districts to make their own decision on allowing homeschooled students to participate in school programs and activities. We find it concerning that under this new proposed policy, the Union 38 homeschool population would be denied access to extracurricular activities for connection, socialization, and all the things that you all have spoken so eloquently about. Um, we know that socialization is a requirement for healthy child development. We see no reason why these children should no longer be allowed access to this opportunity. And we believe this deserves further consideration and input from the families most impacted by potential changes. Um, students attending our district schools are given equitable opportunity to accept, access extracurricular activities and are assessed academically and behaviorally in order to determine if they are eligible to participate in them. Um, I'll skip this part because it's already been said. Each child in our district deserves the opportunity to participate with their peers in meaningful ways. And we are all made richer for expanding our circle of care and community. We urge you to reconsider voting for this amendment, or at the very least, slow down the process and delay a vote to allow for further discussion and information gathering. And this is signed by Lou Vincent, Sean Durrett, myself, Ashley Dodonna, Jessica Pacheco, Emily Krems, Allison Wilson Pierce, Christine Grimaldi, Annette Fannebecker, Nancy Sitzman, Erica Boyd Jacob, Jeremy Davis, J Jamie Taft, Rebecca Williamson, Emily Gaylord, Catherine Bresciano, and Sarah Smith. Thanks for your time. We have about seven people left on the list who had expressed an interest in talking, and we have about five minutes left. So I'll just ask you to keep that in mind as you have your conversations and um, have your comments ready to try to have them as concise as, as possible so that we can get offer as many people an opportunity to be heard. Douglas? Mine should be relatively short. And I'm a pastor, so take that into consideration. <laughs> I, um, my thoughts on this whole thing is we are taking the a, a group of people and separating them from the school. You would not do that with any other group of people in the public class of these kids. You wouldn't do it with the kids who are the, you know, the worst students in the, in the school or the people who are the hardest kids to, to deal with in the school. You wouldn't, you wouldn't do this to the kids. This is about enriching families and the kids in this community. And isn't that what we're supposed to be doing? You know, we all, we all have different opinions on different things. But from my perspective, God loves us all. And he wants us to be able to love each other the same. And in order to do that, we have to honor those who are just trying to take different routes because of their beliefs. 
in a way, you're, you're striking back at them. So that's all I have to say. Roberto, here. Okay. My name is Roberto Cuesta, the David, the Dutifat, the Dad. No. Y les hablo en mi primera lengua. Porque este es el lugar correcto para la inclusividad. My name is Roberto Cuesta, and I'm the father of Ruth and David. And I'm going to speak in Spanish because this is a good place to be inclusive. Las actividades extracurriculares son una fortaleza, no son un premio, son parte de la formación del estudiante. The extracurricular activities are as is strong. What is it? Ah, he, he wants to translate. We have a friend here. We're going to try to do this in one minute with two languages. <laughs> Las actividades extracurriculares no son una, uh, son un complemento de la formación del estudiante. The extracurricular activities are a, uh, yeah, a complement to the students and to help enrich their lives to be a part of this community. Los homeschooling necesitan relacionarse students of homeschooling need to unite themselves. Y a través del deporte se les enseña sports, se les enseña disciplina, them, discipline, formación, trabajo en equipo, working together as a team, y a perder y ganar. How to win and how to lose. El colegio debe tener las puertas abiertas the school should have their doors open. Para que cualquier tipo de educación, so all people that have the opportunity to be educated pueda venir aquí can come here y seguir aprendiendo. and keep learning. Gracias. Thank you. here there are four people left I will extend for four more minutes and if you guys can divide a minute amongst yourselves to try to expedite this so that we can I want to make sure that we also have time to have this discussion we appreciate your input but we'll make sure that we have ample time to discuss amongst uh, the committee as well uh, I, uh, Victor hi my name is Victor and 
I hope that you guys reconsider changing this policy because uh, I, when I was a student, um, it was just a great feeling to be a, a part of the team and to have people, you know, there for you, families, friends, and uh, I think it's just wrong for all the kids because everyone deserves to be a part of something, whether it's school or any extracurricular activities, work, you know, whatever you want to do, I think everyone should have an opportunity to do it equally. Thank you. Amy? These children, they have the right to blossom. Please let them blossom in every area that they can. Say yes whenever you can and not no. Why say no before they even blossom? Thank you. Judy? nationwide trend towards taking homeschooling uh, like the sports and activities away and it talked about not being able to uphold the like to the level of what frontier um, requires but why are you punishing everybody when you could just go on it if something's not working if somebody's not getting the right grades then you should probably deal with one situation it just feels very strange that this came up and nobody has, nobody knew. And it, it, I would really request that you uh, give us a lot more research and data to show us why this is important to happen this way. It doesn't make sense. I just want to take a minute and thank everybody for their public comment. I think it takes a lot of courage and bravery to come and speak in public generally, let alone at a recorded public meeting, especially to the young people who came and spoke. Uh, you should get you out of yourself. Um, I know it feels weird to shift from all of that to your report, but that is next on the agenda. <laughs> Take a long time for us to move on to what everybody in here knows. Please. So thank, so thanks, Ms. Yes, um, I appreciate it. I'd first like to point out I did, did not win the uh, Adam Sandler day today. So, <laughs> um, so I just want, just in my report, I just want to point out a few things. So uh, in terms of uh, professional development, uh, which is ongoing, we're still, we, uh, we just wrapped up a session with uh, executive functioning with Sarah Ward. Uh, we're going to be doing restorative practices again, which is we're excited about, and we're working through uh, tiered support and mental health 
as always. Uh, a couple uh, exciting field trips that some of our classes are going to be taking. So our high school fab labs going to UMass on October 17th. They're going to be visit visiting their engineering design and rocketry labs. Um, we're excited for that. Uh, I want to thank Dan Murphy, our fab lab teacher, for organizing this. Uh, our financial literacy class, who's, which is taught by Heather Lawton, they're going to be doing uh, the there's a mock stock market challenge at Springfield in November, sponsored by uh, Junior Achievement. Uh, they're going to that. We're excited about that as well. Uh, we're introducing a new social emotional curriculum called Changing Perspectives, and in the report that I sent you, there's a link to it. So if you have the opportunity, uh, check it out. It's going to be uh, introduced to our high school, uh, to our high school kids. Um, and I want to point out that our drama club is presenting The Importance of Being Earnest by Oscar Wilde uh, in November on the weekend of the 15th. Um, and a few other things, we're doing the, uh, the PSATs uh, in the Acting Placer next week. Um, as, as Hannah mentioned, Coffee House is coming up and the Fall Springs concert is also coming up open to the public. So you're all welcome to that. So that's, that's my report. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for not making me a liar, but <laughs> all right. Um, I think that uh, the next space that we have is to, to talk about these policies and in, in the interest of kind of dovetailing off of public comment. Go ahead. Um, we could move to to the A's first. They're rather quick, I imagine. Unless people think there's a lot of comments, get those through, and then just go into the next thing. Or you, can, you can change the order, uh, but you can do the A's and then you get to the I. Are you making well. a suggestion that we divvy these up and separate off? Yeah, do the A's first, and then do the I. And the I is the the I is the uh, the homeschool the homeschool policy. So the A's are, as we, if, I guess, right out of the bat, is there any questions regarding the changes to the sexual harassment in policies um, towards? Um, there were many of them were the changes from the. Um, Title IX changes in August, and the one from our A and E group um, as well. Those are the, the, those that we talked about the last week. This is for the policy of the ACA. Mm -hmm. So you do a batch: ACA, ACAA, ACA, ACAB, ACAR, ACAR, AR. Make a motion to accept. Second. <laughs> I'll, I'll move to a roll call on this. Um, Olivia? Yes. Chris? Yes. Bob? Yes. Bill? Yeah. Mary? Yes. Phil? Yes. Jared? Yes. Damien? Yes. Jessica? Yes. Keith? Yes. And I'm, um, yes. And that leaves us with the IHBG policy for discussion. Right. Yeah, would you like to introduce that and rationale? So um, last year, the, the policy subcommittee was reviewing, we're reviewing the entire policy handbook. We came across homeschooling, and there's been, um, we felt that it, it needed to be looked at. I went in and made some changes to it and brought it forward at the last meeting. Um, I think we heard some, you know, some very, um, some very wonderful uh, insights on homeschooling and testimony tonight. And thank you everyone for that. I think it, it's it's still I think it's a healthy discussion that we need to have as a district, though, um, because homeschooling is you know. Is it part of the frontier community or is it a separate school? And that is really where I think administratively we sometimes get caught up where we don't know where the line is. And, you know, what is a student? I know we're talking about athletes as most, but we're talking about other extracurricular programs. So if I talk about athletes, I'm really talking about all programs and if I get off track, here. but what is a student athlete and what are we when we, as a frontier school committee, create what we expect our student profile to look like, what we expect of our students in the classroom, on the street, on the playing field, and in the community, what is, is it part of one thing or can you 
pick and choose portions of that. Because when I look at it, homeschooling has a different curriculum. It's a curriculum that's approved by me, but they're all different. They're different, some are doing online things, some are doing things that may be religiously affiliated. There are some that are a, a collaborations of both or groups of other homeschooling activity, um, families and that kind of thing. They're very different. Where the curriculum at Frontier Regional is set by the school committee about and, and those outcomes. There's also the concern, you know, that it has come up with homeschooling students regarding what does attendance mean? So our student athletes are required to come to school on any day they, they plan on participating. They have to be here for a certain number of hours in order to be eligible to play. Homeschooling programs have a lot of variety um, depending on, and everyone's different, but some do a couple of days a week. Some um, may have regimen scheduled during the week and there's some they do it as their schedule permits as if they're doing other things. So they're not held to, if they get in at 11 o'clock at night from a late trip to Lee Mass and they come back, that they're here, they have to be in school and class in the morning. And that can cause a sense of unfairness to the student body that is at Frontier Regional who has that application, okay? The other, the other thing that are side, and I, and I know people were, were, I think that schools have evolved and there are a lot of other, maybe 30 years ago, there weren't other extracurricular activities. And I know some students are using them. We haven't had a lot of participation, okay? Between around four, two to four students a year are participating in, in extracurricular activities that um, officially are signing up for. Um, so it's not, a, it's really, and I think that's because there are so many other activities out there. There's AU programs in just about any sport you can imagine. Um, in traveling teams and specialization of those kinds of sports. Um, I also, so I'm kind of giving you the, the whole rundown here. In um, budget-wise, homeschool students, while they're considered part of our community, the state doesn't look at it that way. They're not part of our foundation budget. So they're not considered numbers in our budget where we get funding from the state for those students. Students who receive special ed services also don't get reimbursed by the state. It's, it's a loophole where the state has just kind of, has created a system for a small number of students, um, it hasn't really put a lot of extra thought in it. They kind of put it just on the local district, okay? There's also administratively oversight challenges of students who are not part of the community on a day-to-day -day basis. So if students are being homeschooled for, for social emotional issues um, and they, they feel that the school doesn't, can't fit those needs, but then they want to participate in a school event, how do we draw the, the connection? So, because it's an extension of our classroom and we want to make sure that students' needs are being met, but if, let's say a student has high anxiety issues, but they want to, we can't give that support because they're not in our system flowing through. Those who may be receiving special education services, that's a limited number. Um, we, we would have that kind of thing, but there would have to be a sign off on where the authority right now of the school ends in the, and takes over where the school, homeschool ends and the authority of the school takes over. You know, right now, if a student shows up to participate in athletic, they don't have a copy of our handbook. We can say it's online, but all the students have to go through an orientation process, values, what we're doing for school norms. And so these are, these are all challenges. And, and I'm not saying that it has to be solved through this policy thing, but it brings down to that fundamental question back again of is the, is the choice to homeschool? And it is a choice, just like it's a choice to go to a charter school, just like it's a choice to go to a private school. You're asking for a different setup that's being offered at Frontier in the Frontier package, okay? And, and then the question before the committee is, can you, can you pick and choose portions of the Frontier package or is it, is it considered a full one? And, and I've just seen over the last, the last seven years I've worked here, we are trying to do more and more with our students about leaderships on and on the athletic field. Right now, we require athletes and leaders on ship the team during the school day to attend trainings, to be pro, to be peer leaders and um, move the values and ideas and norms that we're trying to move in this community. And homeschool students don't have the opportunity to do that because they are in a different curriculum. They're in a different, they're in a different school. And so that is why 
uh, recommending changes into the into the policy. Um, and so I don't want to keep going here, and going on, but that is you know presenting why it's brought before you. Um, and if these aren't the changes you want to make, go from there. Or this is you know should there be a separation? Everything that the students are homeschool students are using at Frontier Regional outside of special education services can be filled in other other buckets in the community. You know, I my my own kids play in other sports on other traveling teams. I and I move them to different places because that's what they want to do. And they enjoy being with other kids other than just students at Frontier. So that is uh, my summary of why that's important. Currently there are 25 homeschool students at Frontier Regional from Frontier Regional from the four single towns. That was asked and you said, yeah, and, and you said two are currently participating. There are two participating in the fall and program. Sort of is that athletics and extracurricular? Just athletics right now. I don't believe there's anybody participating in the fall play. It was a Is there a way to find out if anybody is doing extracurricular activities other than sports as home students in our school? It would be as they come up okay. in the past. Um, but no, but it's, it's mostly this is mostly an athletics conversation, but it's, it's applying to <coughs> Just to be clear, in the athletics conversation, those things go away as well. Right? Yeah, any, of the other, any of the other extracurricular, like, like theater, play, it's, that, it's all one didn't receive using the, athletics as the way. Well, currently, as no the, one's the, the language is no extracurricular activities. So. Currently, no one's applying the language. Yeah. But the policy. Yeah. 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 Just clear. Uh, go ahead, yeah, Jessica. Yeah. Want to be formal about moving the policy and moving the amendment before we discuss the amendment, or do you want to be more casual? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, we we could do that. Uh, so, what you're suggesting is that we really uh, follow true to Robert's rules and make a motion to begin a discussion on the amendment, and then that yeah. you would. She saying move the discussion, formally move the discussion on the policy. You get a first and a second first open discussion. Right. That someone that's exactly that, that's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, that we would yeah, that we would make a motion on the policy, a second on the policy, and then that would I think traditionally we usually kind of do a motion and then move on to a vote, but what we would do is a motion in a second, and then you would do a, an amendment. I think that's fine so long as we set the ground rules. It's just a slightly different than we normally do it. So go ahead. I mean, amongst our committee members, is there any other discussion before we go any further? Does anybody else want to put their two cents in, like Bill? But so <laughs> I think just, we, just I think, to clarify, I think, I, think we, I think we're saying we're just trying to open up officially okay. yeah, talk so, about the policy okay. so that you're following Robert's yeah, rules. Yeah, so, so that if someone if can make follow an amendment. Robert's rules, this is what we do is we say we're gonna motion in place <laughs> to discuss the homeschooling, someone seconds it, we continue the discussion, and then at some point in some in time someone calls the question, at which point in time we take a vote. I know that that's not how we always do things, but that that would be following protocol. So I, I think that, we'll yes, I would entertain a motion <laughs> to. I move that we approve policy IHEG. And now I'd like to move that we amend the policy. In the final paragraph, strike the, the phrase, participate in the intrascholastic athletic program, student government, and the student activity program or, which, need, which leaves uh, a, the statement now completely saying only those students who are enrolled and in regular attendance in the Frontier Regional School and Union 38 school districts will be eligible to graduate from Frontier Regional School. Yes, yeah, so we really we would have the there's a motion and you need a second and then we can discuss. If there's no second, then the motion dies and we go back to the policy as stated. And then we can discuss. Second. But, okay. 
So now we are discussing, just for clarity's sake, yes. because I know that this can get confusing, especially when there are amendments in, on amendments. Yes. Uh, we are discussing only the <coughs> amendment to strike the will be eligible to participate in the interscholastic athletic program, uh, student government, and the student activity program. So that that policy line would read only those students who are enrolled in and in regular attendance in the frontier regional school and unions 38 school district will be eligible to graduate from frontier regional school go ahead yep. love it but um i'm feeling uh, that the student government of frontier should be comprised of students who are at frontier so i don't know if make amendments an amendment i don't but um i would prefer it to i don't know if you to say this for it to say um to add back in the student government as only those students who are enrolled at Frontier are part of student government. It just, okay. not that I'm Let's trying to just... exclude everyone, I think everyone deserves to be involved in things, but I think if you're governing a group of students, it should be the students who go there. I would like that to ask, sense? are you formally asking for an amendment to the amendment? That's or so would you like to continue bold, discussing the amendment? Continue. It has been seconded. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we should continue are our you, discussion. Are you formally asking for an amendment to the amendment, or would, are you offering that up in discussion, and we will continue to discuss? I guess I'm just right now offering it in discussion that how we're feeling about student government being governed by students who are not part of the frontier students who are here. <laughs> I know it's not easy. <laughs> but Keith has something to do. Go ahead. It, well, it, it kind of plays off of that. Yeah. By removing interscholastic athletic program, student government, and student activity program, does that fall back to the old language that it will be uh, based upon approval of the superintendent? No, because this proposed policy strikes that. So this doesn't change what is being struck what is being struck from the old policy. So that's now just kind of so no one approves? Yeah. Right. That's kind of out of the ether. Before it before it, it explicitly called out that they were eligible for those activities. Right. So the first the first section is struck, right? Explicitly called out they were allowed to now by not amending anything else but this the second paragraph it leaves it up to open so and that's intentional that's no, the look in your face Thank you for <laughs> okay <laughs> i'd like to look in your face something you meant to do yeah okay this is exactly what we have which is why i was saying maybe we pause on the amendment the amendment <laughs> right so that we have a discussion because yes. there may be more things that want to be amended yeah, yeah go ahead i just i just want to make sure that I understand that what we're what this amendment does is it does not exclude homeschooled students from any extracurricular activities unless we put student government back in but that's but that's the purpose of this amendment right is for us to allow homeschool students to do to participate in extracurriculars is that is that am i am i reading this correctly that's the intention yeah okay so Jared, thank you for bringing that up. Now that I'm looking at this, I guess I would unstrike the previous paragraph, which says a student being educated in a home-based program within the district may have access to public school activities of either a curricular or extracurricular nature upon approval of the superintendent. So I'd like to know, would you like to call to vote your amendment? <laughs> so point of order, she Go could ahead. she could she could accept a friendly amendment to the to the amendment. If that's what you'd like to do. Uh, yes, is somebody formally proposing a friendly amendment? Is that what you're proposing first? Friendly amendment? Or I can just update my, my proposed amendment. I think the amender can just accept it. I believe that's the case. So let's be clear about what it is that the amender is accepting a right. friendly amendment. So Jess, you are saying that you would like as part of your amendment to unstrike 
a student being educated in a home-based program within the district may have access to public school activities with either a curricular or extracurricular nature upon the approval of the superintendent. Is that correct? Unless somebody <coughs> has a better idea to match my intentions than this. <laughs> and just to be clear so that Chris has documentation correctly, the entirety of your friendly amendment uh, change would include unstriking that initial paragraph and then continue to read only those students who are enrolled in, in regular attendance at the Frontier Regional School Union 38 School District uh, will be allowed to graduate from Frontier Regional School? Yes. Do we need to re-second that? I, I think we do. Yeah, is the second is the seconder who is um that would be Keith. Keith. Are you fine with that? I'm a little confused about where we are right now. Correct. Uh, Everybody is. Thank you. Yep. I think what happened is you put an amendment before you had an original discussion, which does <laughs> jump in the amendment first before there was any discussion on the pre on the which is which is legal, which is personally yep. whatever process wise, but it immediately went to an amendment before there was discussions on it. And people so where we are is Jessica has made an amendment that initially read only those students who are enrolled in regular attendance at the Frontier Regional School Union and Union 38 school districts will be eligible to graduate from Frontier Regional Schools and has amended that to include unstriking the paragraph before, which reads a student being ed educated in a home-based program within the district may have access to public school activities of either a curricular or extracurricular nature upon approval of the superintendent. If we second that, then we can discuss those changes. If those changes pass with a vote, then we're back to discussing the policy before us with those changes. Go ahead. Or should we, discuss, to, should we discuss I just the motion be, first? I'm sorry, I just want to be clear. Yep. Are we ever going to go back to discussing the no. original language change? Well, so right now we're discussing the amendment to that language, and we discuss and vote on the amendment to that yeah. language, and once we but then you go on you're not discussing the old language right. anymore. Right. right. We're not just, then we're right. That is what happens when we never be discussing the, old, the, the language that was After changed. this amendment, unless so you'd, have to knock down. you'd have to withdraw your amendment to talk in order to go, to go back, back to, and then I can re you could do that. Move again. Okay, I will withdraw, withdraw. my amendment. Thank okay. you for In which case process. we are, that's okay. That's great that this is a good exercise in <laughs> Keeping things organized, even though sometimes keeping things organized makes things a little more confusing. All right, so the amendment to the language is withdrawn, at which point we are back to a discussion that has been, already has a motion and a second to discuss the homeschooling policy as previously presented and is open for discussion. Go ahead. So, uh, you know, just a, a couple of just things just to, first of all, the, the 20 people here, 20 something people here uh, to participate in our democracy is a beautiful thing. And, um, and, and the quality of your comments, like uniformly was outstanding. Just thank you for that. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, the, the one thing that I would like just as a school committee, to, the, 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 the belief that somehow, um, uh, the, the community was not asked to participate in this. I would just say that it is the school committee's legal responsibility to set policies. The way that we do that, we function in a democracy as a school committee. We post an agenda that states what it is we're talking about, and then we talk about it, and then the next month we vote on it. So that is the process of asking to, you know, uh, of asking the community to participate. Um, and that is how people that did see that did eventually notify you um, if you didn't see it yourself. But um, a, a lot of people just don't realize the importance of school committees. 
and what the powers that, that the legal responsibilities and authorities that they have. And it's why um, you should all keep an eye out on your posted agendas. Uh, it, it, most towns have it on their website. Check it, check it once a month. See what they're talking about because it often affects you. Um, so, and then the other thing that I'd just like to talk about is just some of the superintendent's um, uh, com comments and his uh, rationale for requesting this, uh, the, the, the change in, the, in, in policy. Um, because, you know, I, I understand like the, the, the desire to have neat and clear lines, um, but, you know, uh, uh, it's human beings and it's messy and there's no neat and clear uniform one size fits all for human beings. Um, it just, you know, that, that's, the, that's the business that we're in. It's just sort of, to, to me, the Guidestone is sort of, uh, you know, parents, pa parents patria, the, act in the stead of the parents in the best interest of the children. Um, and that's sort of what, you know, you, you and, and to that end, the, the comments that were said from, by, by people that um, what, what, what they're doing, you know, the, this policy sort of assumes that it, it could be viewed as assuming that there is, it is never in the best interest of a child to be homeschooled. And I think it's really hard to say that. Um, I, I can't get there. Um, and, and, and if you believe that there are, that there, it can be in the best interest of a child to be homeschooled, then this seems punitive. Um, and, and so, it, you know, if, if uh, you know, which we're back to, you know, if there are problems with certain individuals or happened in the past, can we not fashion a policy to better equip the superintendent to deal with those problems rather than punish those who we do not wish to punish? Um, so that's, you know, and, and that it, is this an attempt to fashion a one-size-fits-all remedy to a problem that cannot be solved in that manner. And so that's, you know, do, do we have to go from totally okay for everybody for everything to not okay for anybody for anything? Is there not a middle step that we could choose? I don't make the decision you do, but <laughs> yeah. um, I, I think that Again, we, when you talk about philosophy of the educational mission, so are we splintering that? And are we okay with that? And if we are, then that's, that's, that's what we're okay with. But I think it is, it's, it's a conversation that we're having um, that when you talk about the whole student of a student athlete, you know, you know, I don't think you can't you know, in other institutions, this is a, it's a stranger setup, right? In other institutions, you don't have people dropping in to participate in their extracurricular activities. Like in colleges and whatnot, you don't run track at UMass and not go to school there. You know what I mean? So it's an interesting, it's a different kind of setup and where we're trying to do the, you know, and I think that, you know, if you're looking for solutions outside that box, yeah, I, mean, I think we should, we can hold we hold our student athletes to a higher standard. Can we hold homeschool student athletes to a higher standard? I'm gonna have to talk to an attorney about that because the homeschooling law is very specific, and it's so specific that when I ask for more information for homeschooling families, they have the right to say no most of the time. And so it's a very it's very narrow of which we what the school can because there's a lot of rights, and, and I respect the rights of the homeschooling process because it is part of. Um, you know, Americans' rights and, and so forth, right? That you have, you, know, you don't have to, you don't have to buy into the public institution. You can do your own thing. Um, and, and that's great. But what I'm coming at is the question of what other parts can we, can we divide off? And does that, and we're okay with that. 
you know, then I guess that's the, that's the conversation I'm having because that's the part when I'm seeing it is it's, it is splintered. And, and so if we are also a rec department for the town, because that's what it is, it's no longer a student athlete, it's a rec department for other students. We don't allow, we don't allow charter school students to come here to play sports. I mean, they're getting an education from a different chart, but because that's set up differently for some reason. Private school students, those families pay taxes in town as well, but they don't come here if they don't have, you know, if their private school doesn't have a, you know, whatever team, you know. Um, so it's, 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 it is a, there is, there's a vagueness, there is a fog there. And the, right now, the status quo of many communities is ignore it. And so I'm saying I want to have a conversation about it. And that's why it's here tonight, because I don't think it's, I think we have to be clear to what we're expecting of our student athletes, the, the public students who attend Frontier versus teammates that join them. Are they held to the same standard? And, and how do we do that? Because basically the curriculums that are provided by homeschooling families may have different values than what we value that we're putting forward. And that gets very complicated. And so it's more than, you know, it's not a it's not a punishment toward it, one can say that because you're taking away a right it's a punishment toward a homeschooling student but there's a choice there that they want to go a different avenue with their schooling and so I, I get that but the question is if the two avenues are going to intersect what does that look like because i, I think it's really messy right now it, and it's been going just fine because low impact and we haven't had a whole lot of issues but we have to build policies for the problems that fall ahead and how we solve those problems. But it still is low impact if there's 20, if what? Two. Say, two, two in the fall season, two correct. Two in the fall, 24 district-wide out of four towns? 25 for Frontier. 25. That's for Frontier, there's more from the elementary schools. Okay. So. Put a few minutes. Go ahead. That, you know, that, that, that still is pretty low. And, and, you know, I, I, yes, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts is an essentially unreliable partner. Um, yes, the, the, it is, there are inequities and unfairnesses with regard to charters, private, whatever, but, you know, we can still try to be fair, as fair as we can be to the group of people that would be affected by this policy. Um, uh, despite all of those things. Amy? I was, I've been giving a lot of thought over the weekend. I just want to bounce my ideas off, off everyone. And what uh, you were talking about, Phil, Darius, a lot of points you were talking about, I, uh, I've kind of jotted down. Um, over the weekend, when I've been researching this stuff, we are not the only school district that has ever dealt with this stuff. Um, in fact, what I've come to learn is they're called the Tim Tebow laws. And if anyone knows who Tim Tebow is, he is a Heisman Trophy winner uh, for Apple School of Florida. And he was homeschooled, and he was allowed to play at his football team for his varsity school. And then he went on to college, and he won the Heisman Trophy. And then a lot of <coughs> homeschool families wanted the same rights that he had and was allowed to participate in varsity sports. Uh, Massachusetts is, from what I read, only one of five states that allows the local school district to make that decision. There's other states that are very strict, where it's just legislated from the top that you they can't participate. In other states, it's wide open and they can't. Not that that matters, just a little bit of background knowledge. I learned, I thought it was just interesting. Um, there are two points that kind of I do have to think over that, you know, it does concern me. Uh, we talk about inclusion, and I'm all for everyone being included, but it's inclusion is how one looks at inclusion, right? So <laughs> the MIA has a set of standards and rules that our student body has to follow. GPA, attendance, uh, quarterly grade reports, MCAS, graduated. Um, back in my day, I don't know if it's still true or not, 
On competition day, if you had gym class, you had to participate in gym that day. If you couldn't participate, you were pulled from competition that day. So homeschool kids, we don't have any reliable source to verify that any of those things have occurred. Um, I asked Darius a few questions. He gets annual grade reports, is that accurate? So the, in, on the homeschooling application, the, the families have the choice of how they want to provide their assessment. And usually it's annual reports. And sometimes it's sample work as part of that annual reports. Very few are picking um, assessments. There are a lot, um, people are doing online um, schooling now. And so I'm getting online reports with grades of um, completed sections. Some are, there's online schools that you can be a part of, and there's online classes where they will give you, you've completed so many sections out of so many sections. And so I'll get printouts of that report too. So that's what that kind of looks like. But it's usually end of year report. But it's end of year. So we're, you know, on quarterly grades, my kids have witnessed their friends being pulled off of a team bus because the grades came out that semester or that quarter and they didn't make the grades and they were pulled off the bus in competition. That is not going to, how is that equitable with our kids versus homeschool kids? Um, those are some thoughts I had with, I guess, that <coughs> aspect of it. The other aspect is, and this really kind of goes back to, is how do we define our school community? Is it the kids that are in our building? Is it our community? Is it our district? And that is really what's up for discussion, I think, today. Um, you know, we have schools that are, live, we have kids that live in our district that go to Deerfield Academy. I wouldn't necessarily refer to them as part of our school community. We have kids that go to uh, school choice to another school. We have more school choice kids that come in here. One could argue they're out of our district, but they go to our school, they're in our school community. Vice versa, we have kids that go out of our district to another school. They live in our district, they go to another school. Are they part of our school community or are they part of Mohawks or Pioneers or wherever they go? Charter kids, they live in our district, they go to another school. So for debate if they're part of our school community. Um, where I get, where I guess a little touchy is homeschool families want to not use our academics, but use our athletic department. Again, is that using it like a rec, a, rec, a town rec department? Um, it's, it's not an a la carte cafeteria program. Where does it end? You like the math? You like the math program, but you don't like the history program? So you pull your kids from the history program, but allow them to use the math curriculum? It's not there yet, but, you know, is that, could that, where this goes? Um, Darius, you already brought it up, you know, you can't go to GCC, but then try out for the UMass basketball. I know that's another level, but you know you can't go to another school and try out for our athletics. Th those are the talking points that I wanted to talk talk about tonight, and the concerns that I have, and the opposite end of the spectrum of um, what we heard tonight. And I do appreciate all the emails and, and everyone speaking tonight. And I, I do like listening to that both sides of the conversation. I have a, a couple things that I'd like to say kind of spinning off of that a little bit. I think one up, is, please? I'm sorry? Can you speak up a little bit? Sure. Yeah, so a, a couple things I wanted to, to say spinning off of this is that I would define our school community as kids who are or can go to our school system because just because someone is two doesn't mean that they are not going to come to our kindergarten and we have early childhood outreach programs <coughs> that access that 
community. We have people who may be homeschooled for a period of time and then may come into our school district at another time. And I think that, I think that it is within our purview in particular, considering this policy is in front of us, that it is our responsibility for policy that concerns all the school age children but in, then why don't in the district. We open up our athletic department to everyone in our district that go to other schools. So then, yeah. It was so I guess the my thought about that was that like if you apply to GCC or you apply to go to some other space, you're requesting to be included in their space or you're applying to be a part of their community, whereas these folks happen to just live in this space. But they're choosing to be, to take an alternative academic path. But if they but, wanted to come to our school tomorrow, they would be entitled to. Right. Because they, they could. And then they, they could. And then they could play our sports. And we are making decisions that impact them. Yeah. But, but there try, are kids too. But to a sense, that's a, that's a false choice because the right now, the homeschoolers have a legal right to be homeschooled mm -hmm. and they have they are based on state law, they have, uh, if, if, if a district permits it, they have a legal right to participate in our sports. That's not necessarily, that may or may not be true of other, of, of other students situated in other situations. And it's not really before us because what's before us is this situation. So um, we don't need to decide that situation because it's not this situation. Thank you, I appreciate it. This doesn't always happen, Phil, but I appreciate you bringing us back to the topic. <laughs> are you saying what you're saying? But, yeah, but that is exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> Don't have an opportunity to call it out, so when I do. Go ahead. All right. So. Uh, Several thoughts for me. This feels to me like a solution in search of a problem. We don't have an issue that needs to be resolved by, by passing this. Um, it is not common in Massachusetts. I asked Darius last week, he only knows of one district in the state. So if we pass this, we will be the second district in the state, which makes us statewide leaders in exclusionary practices. That's not a distinction I want us to have. Um, a lot of the, every single one of the arguments in favor of this policy come back to a mentality of our kids versus not our kids. We are elected to put all of the kids in our town first. And this really does not do that. I really feel like passing this policy as presented does not honor our duties as school committee members because they are all our kids. They could be in our school tomorrow if they wanted to be. The decision we make tonight impacts the homeschool kids. Therefore, they're our kids too. Um, I think that the presence of the homeschool kids in our extracurriculars and athletics makes the experience richer for the frontier students. My daughter, is really upset about this policy. She's never heard about a school committee policy before, but she's got a homeschooled a teammate, and she doesn't want that person to be cut off. Um, Darius, I'm really interested in your point that um, homeschool, homeschool students can access special education and cost us money, special education services, but the state doesn't help fund it. That seems to me like a state level policy that we should be advocating for. In fact, I can go talk to Natalie and Joe about adding it to the rural schools bill. Can we get homeschool students included in the foundation, which would probably disproportionately impact rural schools. Let's fix that. And in terms of other things we could fix, we could pass a policy for more accountability for homeschool athletes. If we're concerned about their attendance and their grades, let's make that its own policy. I agree with the commenter, I think it was Ashley, who characterized this as extreme. Because it's not a solution to an existing problem, there is no nuance, there are no conditions to it, it's just a blanket ban. If we had a problem, we'd be looking at the actual solution. So if we are concerned about accountability for our homeschool athletes, let's make a policy for that specifically. Thanks. Thank you. Can you have your hand up a fraction of a second? Sure, because um, so my thinking on this, I thought a lot about it. I appreciate everybody's comments. Um, this is just a philosophical, I think it's a, a discussion to be had. Um, there are, I respect anybody's reasons to homeschool their child, but I do view homeschooling as further erosion of the mission of the public schools. Uh, it can be looked at similar to a public space, a park that public money's put into, people can access it, they can access it their own ways, nobody's ever happy with exactly how it's done. 
but almost the home school is, is taking a section of the park, but then wanting to be involved in other parts of it. And it's almost like education a la carte. And it is akin to, uh, it, it eats away at the public mission similar to vouchers, similar to school choice, similar to uh, educational tax credits, similar to educational ATMs, similar to school choice, similar to charter schools. It eats away at the public mission. That being said, I'm also uncomfortable with uh, thou shalt not laws. I prefer thou mayest. And this is such a small number of people I don't know that I can, I don't know if this is the time, the place, or the rationale to draw a line in the sand on this one. I think it's a worthy discussion. And, and I do think it, it, it erodes public education. Um, but I struggle with just simply excluding a small, small number of students. It hasn't been a, a, a significant issue to drive us forward. My main concern right now is the, the amendment as it's uh, MIA. There's no. I'm, well, I'm sorry. The, yeah, that's okay. the policy IHGB with this suggestion takes out the the very specifics of athletic student government and, and student activities that were in there. And then the, the first ones, at one point it was the upon the approval of the superintendent, now it's on approval of the principal, and those things are kind of left out there. So I think there should be more specificity. Just to be clear, we're not talking about the amendment at all. The amendment was right. Dropped. I'm talking about the, okay. the actual I should just, yeah. current changes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, here. So for me, um, I struggled with this all weekend too. <laughs> we both had we all have, yeah. We've read, we've researched, we've read all these um, very clear thinking people that have written in, in favor of um, not changing the policy. So in my um, professional career, I've been retired in a little over a year, I was school adjustment counselor in the special education department. So in the seven through 12 schools. So inclusion including everyone never consciously excluding anybody um, is, is what i do what i did and so i don't ever can ever imagine voting to exclude anybody these are people have made this point over and over these are all of our children but there's another side to that and um, damien alluded to it as a second part of my job a few years after i started I was coordinator of the Student Services Department, which serves all the children. And so I learned very quickly any change that's made to anything, a handbook, whatever it is, you have to think of who, all the people that are being affected and how it affects them. So then I thought about, well, what about the um, enrolled students, regular education, but then there's also special education, and students with 504s that have disabilities that are enrolled students and they have to meet the eligibility requirements which is something you alluded to the grades come out and suddenly you know they've struggled and suddenly they're ineligible so then i really went down a rabbit hole and said okay so let's not have eligibility for anyone because that's the only way to make it fair there's no consistent data to compare those two groups of people so it's a dilemma. We've had great talking points, and the public comments were awesome. Maybe thinking of something Jessica said about a, a separate, some kind of an accountability policy for homeschool. I don't know what the options are. Sorry, Darius, I didn't bring a solution. It's all right. <laughs> I'm supposed to bring solutions. Good conversation. Um, yeah. But excellent conversation. Just, just a quick one. We've been talking about sports, but. How about graduation? How about getting that diploma? Where I think Darius told me, I asked him I don't know when it was, but when's the last <coughs> time we didn't have a kid graduate because they failed MCAS? And we've had one kid in, I'm not sure how many years it was, but one kid. I mean, MCAS has accountability for graduation. What's the accountability for homeschooling that type of test NCAS to get your diploma after after spending 12 years in school. Oh, I 
kind of want to jump off that and a lot of other people's things. Um, but I think uh, Darius brought up a really great point that we need more clarity of where the homeschooling, um, you know, regulation actually, you know, stops and where FRS begins and more clarity about how that's going to be if we want there to be an accountability similar for what frontier athletes um, are required to do. Um, you know, um, someone made a, a point that we don't tell other people they can't participate, and we do. We tell kids who don't have the grades that they can't do that. In fact, my daughter had a psychotic break after um, COVID, and even though she'd been on a track year, team for six years, her senior year, her last thing, she was not allowed to participate. Um, and we took that, that was how it was. You didn't get the grades, you couldn't do it, you can't participate. And that was just how it was because that was how the school was. And that was upsetting. And for sure, I don't want anyone to have to go through that. But I think that there has to be some sort of, you know, point and what is that? And who's going to administrate that? You know, like if we do make more, do we need to, you know, get somebody to make sure that all, you know, if we want to. Uh, keep track of more homeschool, um, you know, accountability for that. Who's going to do that? And I'm not saying we shouldn't. I'm just saying that's things we need to think about. Is who's going to do that? Um, and that there, it seems to me that there's some very different things here. Um, I, well, for me, I find it to be very different that we would just the whole of awarding high school diplomas um, is very different than the amount of people who are actually playing the sports and again i'm not like making a distinction about what we should or should not do but that just seems very different like where we crossed out um you know standards for graduation i, I think it's really important that we keep something that we do make some decisions about do we who do we give a diploma to and do we hold ourselves to that um but you know i don't want to be known as people who are like you can't you know play sports with your friends um so it just seems like there's we see more clarity or discussion around all of this. We don't seem to be coming to some really tight decisions. <laughs> Can you clarify uh, how do where do the graduation diplomas come from? Homeschool General, students do not receive just, a do not receive a diploma for from Frontier unless they request one of the school committees. So we haven't had that recently. Right. So um, homeschool so students yeah. will be, um, it's determined by the homeschool instructor, which is usually a parent, that they have com completed, um, and they're of course leading the reports to me along the way, but it's their determination that they, they've met the criteria for their diploma. And, and so there. that's not something that's generally being requested. No, years. but I, I thought it was interesting that it was in there that one could, and I thought that, that there was such a, di again, a division between um, what's happening versus what was in that old policy. You know what I mean? I think the policy does need to be updated, and that um, it's one of the things that was in there. No, participation got everybody's attention, but um, the idea that you can take a different program outside of the purview of the school committee and you re receive a diploma from the school committee, it is kind of, I, it, was, it doesn't make sense. Um, Olivia, so like what you brought up about your daughter there, I don't think that's within our control as a school. I don't think that's a school policy necessarily. I think there's MIA rules is, yeah. that govern that for yeah. everybody. So, and so that's some of the research. I, I did the same type of thing. I, I researched myself this weekend. I went through the MIA rules around that stuff. I did a, a, a little, um, Camp Bell family discussion in the car, get my kids' thoughts, my wife's thoughts. Do you know what I mean? Like, I just, it's something I needed to bounce off of them. Uh, thank you all for your public comments. Really appreciate them all. Um, well thought out, really excellently presented. Um, really not an easy solution. There's no easy solution. I think um, a lot of what you said, Keith, resonated with me. Um, I think there are there are risks. So reading through those MIA rules, there are, there are things we need to ensure are happening in the homeschooling situation. There's, there's sections dedicated to homeschooling. And I don't know that we're, we're doing that. And so the, the risk exists that the entire football team could become ineligible to participate in the, in the postseason, as an example, if we don't 
get that right. And that's a risk. I think to Keith's point, it's such a, it's, it's very small numbers that it's a risk I'm willing to take. I think there are benefits, obviously benefits to those who um, are homeschooled and are, have this opportunity to participate. Um, benefits to my own kids who are, are interacting with those students. So the, to me, there are benefits and there are risks. And I think um, right now it's small, but hypothetically, we take just one uh, incident. But just further discussion, further focus on this from our from our group is, is what we require. So just to, to, to further uh, enlighten some of the difficulties that I had in this, I've been teaching ninth grade for two decades. And that's a real transition point. I've had many, many homeschool students, charter, choice students come back in. Uh, generally, my homeschool students and charter students are performing below where I would expect them. I, I, I'm not necessarily favorable in that regard. However, we want all of our students in our community, in our school, and the sports, theater, and performing arts is a hook at that ninth grade level to bring students back into the building. So to also eliminate that possibility of trying to bring students back, uh, I struggle with that. Mm -hmm. So just the, yeah, go the, ahead. The, the, the one thing that sticks with me throughout this whole discussion is um, Darius, Darry, you know, saying that he, he would like to go back to the to the attorney to, to our you know to, to our counsel with what can we do to get a middle ground to get more accountability without this blanket ban, and I think that that's really the best next step, uh, and. You know, so, so I would make a motion that we just that you know, with the greatest of respect for the work that's been done on this, so but that we say no to policy IHBG and uh, look forward to uh, an alternative being presented at some point. Just to be clear, uh, yeah, you're not making a motion. To, there's already a motion on the table about just, this. Um, are you making mine? Yeah, motion to table. I'll second that. Any discussion about the motion to table? So what? So we're tabling. Uh, well, what the, the motion is on the table because you have to about. have it. You have to have an active policy. So we just keep what we have. You're tabling the changes to policy, so the old policy the remains. Old policy would remain. And mm -hmm. quite frankly, you can table something indefinitely. So it's like, I just let people know that you got to take it off, back off the table at a different meeting, or it, it sits on a table. It's one of those. But our intention is to table it in the limits. So, what do I, my meeting? I, 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 I don't know that you're motion has a timeline attached to it. Is that correct? No, no timeline that you just have a, it, it, a motion based, to table <coughs> the discussion. Based on um, whatever work product is generated. And should the motion pass that has been seconded to table the discussion on this, the previous policy goes into, it goes back into Remains. effect. It would ne it never, never stop. have effect. It never stopped. And, and at some point in the future, a date to be determined, somebody comes back with other information and we make a motion to untake it. Right. My only concern on that is that giving public notice, can you, you can't just suddenly, right. you know what I mean? Like, oh, say this for a June meeting, there's no one ever here. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, do you have to give, how do you do that in a way? Because I don't want to, pay, you know, there's, I heard those feelings of distrust in, the, in our previous pro process right. that, that there's somehow, if you take it off the table, is it first read again? Yes. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess that would be my I concern too, is I, my concern is that would it would leave folks in a space of... Uh, that decision is actually the chairs to make as to how an agenda is. The, the agenda is the chair's unilateral responsibility. So do it that way. Um, we're gonna need to move to put it back on the table. Right. 
You can't just put it on, on the table unilaterally. Right. It takes a vote of the committee to put it back on the table. Right. Once it's been dated. Right. She, she can put it on the agenda or not. It's, it's her agenda. Right. But. It would take a vote to take it off the table a, to discuss again, is what Bill is saying. Right. Yeah. So it would be similar to a first read to have it on the agenda to do. Bill, could you. In your experience, Bill, would you, can you take it off the table and vote it in that same meeting? Or would you have to then go to your two-read system again? No, I don't. I, in my opinion, if you vote to put it back on the table, we pick up right where we left off when you put it on the table. Right. So I just think I, we would need to make sure we can communicate that clearly with the public. I mean, I guess that would be my concern with, with tabling it, would right. be that if we table it, that is the potential, whereas if we vote and it doesn't pass that it does require that same you can vote it down first back, read, send it back read. to policy committee right I mean, so uh just to be clear for hands up this is for comment on the tabling motion that's on the go ahead because you've been typing away no, that's I, right. talk, I guess <laughs> functionally the doing something like the 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 just quorum amendment is the same thing as tabling because as far as i read it like it just sort of goes back to the pre the what the previous Policy. wording would do with, with the exception of the of the of the, the deployment, right? right and so i think i i think i don't want to table this i want to i'm i i, I want to <laughs> then talk about that <coughs> So that then we can go through the regular motions and the, the procedures of, you know, first read, second read, uh, uh, if we ever want to change this again. That's that's my, my thought on this. But the amendments yeah, the short, would have to get. The long and short, the long and short of it is if you table it, it's the same, in the short term, it's the same as defeating it. The policy that exists now stays in place. We yeah. haven't changed anything. Right. I just don't want, I don't, I, I don't want this like sort of Damocles hanging over our head that we could just pull out, put it on the table at some random meeting if we wanted to. Not that we would, but I don't want that to be a possibility. Could you put a timeline on it? Like, so if it, this year, you know, policy stays as is, it goes back to policy subcommittee. Next time we meet. Go ahead, Keith. I want to go back to Phil was tabling it so that Darius could get advice from what would that, what are we looking at? What kind of advice would we need? How long do we think that would be? I mean, so, I mean, basically, you're, that wouldn't be in the policy per se. Those would be procedures in documentation that would be provided to get the superintendent's approval in order to play athletics. Mm -hmm. So if we say that, um, I know in in other, Damien shared an article with me with about other states, um, other states have like, you have to show, you have to give the same grading time period of the athletes that are in season so that you have to give the progress report and you have to give the quarterly grades up until that point so that they would have to have a different, you know, so you could, he would, he would advise like where the line is on that, but that wouldn't be in the policy itself. That would be in the procedure of, of that kind of thing. So as I see it, unless you want to extend the policy to say that as well, um, but Essentially, somebody's got to be, in, it's going to fall on me because the state says it's going to, su the superintendent oversees it. Then I'll just make George do it. But the, um, no, but I was joking. The, uh, so, but the, you know, whatever procedures in place, you know, comes out of my office. Normal, unless the committee wants to get their hands on that. Which I wouldn't recommend. Because that allows me to change it year to year if it's asking too much or asking too little. I want to ask real quick too, yeah. and not to put anyone on the spot, including myself on the spot. Are we not prepared to vote on this as is tonight? Well, that is part of the tabling question. Yeah, um, I think that if you would like to call the question, then we can vote and find that yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll just draw the motion to table so that the question okay. can be called. Okay. Already seconded. All right. Okay. The motion to table has been withdrawn. Do you want to withdraw too? Because you seconded it. Sure. Call the question, Madam Chair. Yep. Not after it's been called the question. 
Excuse me? We could, we could, we could just not, we could vote down the question. Vote, is, vote down is, calling the question, right? Or you could- There's no debate on calling the no, question. You, you call, call the question, the question and then you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, is, that is how that goes, yeah. All right, just for clarity, I know we've gone back and forth several times, so we, the, we are calling the question to vote on the original policy as changes, changes as presented and we'll go through a roll call. Um, a, a yes vote accepts the policy as presented. A no vote um, it, it would revert back to the prior uh, word. So, so has the question been uh, seconded also? It the original? Been, yep. Okay. A while ago okay. prior to discussion. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not it's been a long good. time ago. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And I'll That's make a point, of, a, a point of, a point of information here. Yes. What we could do also is the policy subcommittee could take this up again and then bring an amended version after this. So you do that as an action that after, after the vote. Correct. I'm just, I'm just saying that, that out loud. That is correct. That yes. That's and probably you, what would happen after this. The point of information. Yeah. Before we vote, I want one clarification. Yep. <laughs> because I know there's people in the audience who are concerned with this outcome immediately in this vote, pending future policy changes that could happen. There is a quote unquote grandfather clause for current um, athletes. So we, anytime we've made changes, students who have been involved in whatever their change it is, we're allowed to carry forward. And so I, I shared that um, with one of our student athletes who's currently playing. Um, that you know, when we change graduation requirements or that kind of thing, you can't in midstream suddenly say take that thing away. And those who would, are currently participating or participated last year, let's say in a spring sport, um, would be able to continue because we they were allowed to join those teams under the rules, the previous rules, and that is um, that's, that's the usual practice. What's that? Can they continue through twelfth grade of homeschooling if they're in seventh grade now and they're on one of our teams? Can they keep doing it? Yeah, they would be able to continue for six years. Okay. So I just want to make that clarification. Just to, we have a call to question. We're going to go ahead and go through this. Uh, would you clarify one more time? And yes, I know. Yes, I will. So the the question is on the policy IHBG, as the the wording is recommended the new, the here changes. the new changes and so a yes policy accepts those a yes vote accepts those changes a no vote declines those changes going back to the policy as stands olivia Chris? Yeah, she's bob yes bill yes mary no phil no Jared? No. Damien? Yes. Jess? No. Keith? No. No. Thank you for my not making me get out of calculator. <laughs> <laughs> motion fails and uh, the policy does not pass as amended. No, as presented. As presented. Yep, sorry. I'm, and Please make a motion to bring it back I think that would be a fantastic idea. Would you like can to I make that? The policy? Yes, you can. <laughs> okay. I need the motion. Like all the more reason to. <laughs> okay. uh, just to tidy up those sentences, the motion is to <laughs> refer this policy back, back to, to the it. policy subcommittee for review and has been seconded. And we'll go through Olivia. Uh, Chris? Yes. Bob? Yep. Bill? Yep. Mary? Yes. Phil? Yeah. Jared? Yes. Damien? Yes. Jessica? Yes. Keith? Yes. Yes. So for those of you who are in the public who may have had some difficulty following <laughs> the conversation <laughs> as there are amendments and seconds and all that, uh, the policy has not changed. It did not pass and it is going back to the policy committee for review. Thank you, school committee. Thank you.
All right, it is approaching nine o'clock and I would just like to offer for those of you who are here, I don't think we have tons of time left, but does anybody need a quick minute to stay and stretch? Okay, I agree. Totally, I am ready to move them up. Uh, I think we've got Kevin, Kevin and Jody, do you guys want to, whoever wants to go first. Kevin, you popped up first. Um, yeah, do I have permission to just share my screen really quick, or is that a possibility? Yeah, go ahead. Yes. Um, I don't have that in my settings, so I need to. Yep, sorry. Sorry, Kevin, just one minute. I know that you guys are done with that. Oh, sorry, video, but if you guys don't mind, just kind of keep it down for a little bit. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. Um, you can see my screen. Yep. I'll be I'll be quick. <laughs> um, <laughs> hi, my name is uh, Kevin Murphy. You know I teach uh, um, computer science at Frontier. Uh, this is my 16th, no, 15th, 16th year with Frontier, and I've been traveling um, uh, internationally with students since uh, before that, and pioneer when I was a pioneer. Um, and um, I've been traveling, uh, did several trips here at Frontier in the past, and I just want to. Uh, request of uh, this new uh, trip that is for 2026, uh, Switzerland, Italy, and France. Um, and I travel because I, I enjoy bringing the kids out and, and sharing that experience of, of the world and opening the doors to them because when I was in high school, I had that opportunity and it's just something I, I want to share with the kids um, over and over and over again. Um, you know, uh, YEF, because I've been with EF ever since the beginning. Uh, they're very, they're all over the world. It's very safe. They have um, uh, play, uh, uh, offices all over the world, and it's, it's a very secure um, system. Uh, a lot of schools use them in our region. Just thought I'd share that with you. Um, and, uh, you know, it's a global experience for the kids. Um, you've, you've, you've had trips presented to you in the past, so you were aware of the importance of travel. So I'm gonna cut to the chase. <laughs> um, so uh, the trip is going to be in April of 2024. Uh, the current price is at $4,300. Um, it's reasonable. Prices have gone up overall. Scott, are you, I mean, uh, Kevin, are you mean 2025 or 2026? I said, did I say 25? I you said, said 2024. 24. Sorry, April 2026. I planned way ahead. I just want to be sure. Very good. Uh, so, so the idea is, uh, you know, getting approved for next year. Uh, but um, the, uh, the idea is to get keep the payments down for students if we start now. Plenty of time for fundraising and all that. Um, and also, there's other trips going on in 25, so I'd like to keep it spaced out. Um, and you know, a lot, lots included. It's a great deal. Um, so here's the date. Here are the dates. Um, so the idea is. We kind of have a target uh, for Wednesday before vacation to fit in the 11 days, but depending on how they align it with their schools, sometimes it's like collaborative. So the, the, the travel departure date can range in various ways. So I'm, I'm requesting kind of like this window um, between the 14th and the 26th. So we'd be back the Sunday the 26th so that the kids can come back on Monday fresh and ready for school. Um, <laughs> That's the idea. That's the hope. Um, so here's here's it on a visual calendar for you to look at. But that's uh, basically what we're we're trying to do. So I would appreciate uh, um, any questions or feedback, any of that thing. And uh, well, yeah, that's all I have. I have a question. Yes. Would a homeschool student be allowed to go on this trip? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, actually. Um, uh, adults can go on this trip too. So yes, a homeschool student um, within our district, I would imagine, would be able to go. <laughs> Kevin, how many are you expecting or hoping to get? So I always, I always aim for thirty. Um, I've had a, a group of thirty at Pioneer years ago, um, and just the idea is you fill the bus, or twenty to thirty, you fill the bus, and then you don't have to share with another school. Okay. So if you have anything lower than that, we, we have to split like our experience with another school, it's kind of, you know, 
Uh, so that's that's a goal. It doesn't have to be. Thank you. And my kid went on a trip with Kevin a couple, last year. Great experience. Does a great job. I make a motion to accept Kevin's trip. I'll second it. All in favor? One school committee rep has to go. <laughs> we tried this a couple years ago, I think. I think Olivia tried to sneak on. Oh, Olivia did. I think yeah. she's trying, trying to go to France. I'm she's nominating Olivia to go. I'm happy to go. At her expense. <laughs> thank, thank, thank you very much. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. I don't want to go with Jody. You, Jody. Jody. <laughs> Thanks. Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for having me. So I'm Jody Greenberg, and I work um, at Frontier Middle um, and High School. I teach um, primarily Spanish, but also French. So I'm just going to share my screen with you. I will try to be brief. Um, and just a warning that my presentation is nowhere near as pretty as Kevin's is. So let's see. Here we go. Alrighty, does everybody see that on full screen? Yeah. Okay. So, thank you. Let's see. Let me just. Uh oh. Why can't I get up to my first screen? So, hold on one sec. A little technical difficulty here. There we go. Does everybody see? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, my proposal is to create um, a short term two way student exchange program to France. And what I mean by that is um, short term meaning we're not talking about a semester abroad or a month abroad. We're talking about um, a period of approximately 10 days. Um, so what that would look like is um, 10 to 15 juniors and seniors from Frontier um, would be um, participating in the program. It's a two-way program, so we have identified a partner organization in Rodez, France. Um, and the idea is that they would send 10 to 15 juniors and seniors to Frontier in October of 2025, so a year from now, uh, for approximately nine to 10 days. Um, and then in April of 2026, we would send um, our students, again, uh, 10 to 15 frontier juniors and seniors to Rodez. So um, our objective is to cap costs um, around $2,500, which includes travel, um, local transportation, excursions, and meals. And why that is, is because this is really um, an educator um, this is an educator developed program, so there's no company, there's no middle person. It is a home stay exchange program. And our hope is that this would be something that would be sort of, um, well, so our Dutch exchange program um, for the last couple of years has sadly, I won't say it's defunct, but we are having very, um, we're having difficulties identifying partners. And so uh, it's on pause. And so our idea is that this program would sort of um, function in place of that if, um, you know, uh, until that gets up and running, or perhaps replace it if um, we're unable to um, start that again. And so the idea really is this is more geared towards students who um, are in the world language programs does not at all exclude anyone who is not in those programs, but um, our intent is because we don't have um, uh, any AP classes in the language department to be able to offer this sort of extended um, immersive experience um, for students to stay with families um, and hopefully to develop, um, you know, strong and lasting relationships. So our goal is that students would spend two to two and a half partial days in school. Um, there would be lots of local excursions to um, nearby areas. And so I just want to show you again where Rodez is. It's in southwestern France here. So it's about a two hour um, bus or a train ride to Toulouse. Toulouse is the airport that we would fly um, in and out of. So, um, whoops, excuse me, sorry. Um, so, uh, 
we would also like um, to have a couple of longer excursions to the cities of Albi and Toulouse, as well as to offer students some uh, natural activities. Um, there's some beautiful hiking and canyoning opportunities um, nearby. So we would also, obviously the French students would be coming here first, so um, our goal would be to offer them an experience um, with, with families in Western Massachusetts, frontier families, so that they could get to know what um, Western Massachusetts is like. Um, we would have a very similar setup um, and we would take some local sort of, sorry, local um, excursions to places like Old Deerfield, Sturbridge Village, um, UMass, the other campuses, and then uh, two longer excursions, probably to Boston and to New York. So why Rodez? Well, we had a um, student uh, teacher from that area last year who uh, spent five months at Frontier, who was amazing. Uh, we developed a really great relationship with her, um, and she actually um, investigated from her school in France, and. Uh, I've been in touch with the teachers um, for the last couple of months trying to kind of put this in the works. So why else? Well, France is um, a place that I know um, very well. I spent uh, 15 years of my life there and I'm familiar with that area. It's a small, safe and rural setting. It's very similar to Massachusetts. So while the, at the same time students would experience, you know, a, there are a lot of cultural differences and, and really a, a, an amazing experience, um, it's not like they would be um, in a big city going mostly to art museums and things that might not interest them, but um, really kind of doing sort of things in a smaller setting, so going to local markets, going to visit local things, and also taking advantage of a lot of the um, natural beauty around. So, like I said before, it's about two hours from the Toulouse airport. The weather in April is beautiful. Lots of um, beautiful architecture and markets, delicious cuisine. Um, and we would be close to Albi, which is a beautiful medieval city, and the Ro Roquefort cheese production areas, prehistoric caves, grottos, medieval villages, and gorges. So just a couple of pictures. This is Rodez here. This is the... Um, market in the evening. This is the Lycée, where uh, the high school, our, our partner high school. Um, here are, this is so Roquefort, and the um, places where the Roquefort was made and stored um, in the underground caverns, and um, this village of Roquefort. And again, just some of the beautiful, so these are some of the grottos, and this is the, um, the gorges that are located uh, right nearby. So basically, this is Albi and Toulouse. It's a beautiful, beautiful area. So um, I just want to thank you very much for entertaining our proposal and for helping us to build um, this fantastic opportunity, both to bring French students here um, and for us to bring our students there, um, for them to get to know students of their own age on a very personal level, um, and hopefully make a lifelong friendships. So, any questions? I just have one question. What's the vetting process on either end for the families that they're staying with, both here and in France? So, um, again, I would base this mostly off of what we have done previously with the Dutch Exchange. So, there is an application process where, um, where we get uh, you know, questionnaires that are um, both kind of vetted on either side. So um, the, the, the team in France would be vetting the families and the families, you know, it would only be uh, student families um, and it would be the same here. Thanks. And uh, it's a two-way exchange, so ideally what would happen would be the students would stick together for both sides of the exchange. 
think this is a great program. I'm jealous. I wish the school committee would adjourn to Al Beach and the Brooklyn Cave. Would you like to make a motion that we adjourn to Al Beach? Would you like to make a motion to approve this? I'll make a motion to approve this fantastic idea. All right, all in favor? Thank you. Thank you, Jody. Thank you. Thank you. We need to appoint an MASC delegate that I know of. It's just the two of you, Jessica and Olivia. So long, is that correct? I am definitely. I'm not. <laughs> Sorry. I nominate Jess as our delegate. So I might end up being the Sunderland delegate. So I nominate. I nominate Olivia. Olivia, it's Friday afternoon at 3:15, which is a change of the timing, so that makes a difference for you. No, I won't be home for dinner. I will not be home for dinner. Second nomination, Olivia. All in favor of Olivia being our voice in the case. Thank you, sir. I would be more than happy to entertain a motion to table the student entry fee the table. conversation or move it to the, motion to the table yeah to move it to the next meeting yeah i'll put on the next yeah. agenda uh second yeah looks like they're paying friday night all in favor <laughs> unless someone looks the other way getting home early 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 <laughs> then if we have that discussion Unless there's anything else, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn, Madam Chair. Yeah, Darius, do you have anything? <laughs> no. <laughs> You're on the, the last little list on the fantastic. All in favor of heading home. Thank you.